Hello, Junk Wax Investor community. Today we'll be looking at the top 10 Junk Wax era baseball cards that sold on eBay in the last week. In addition to the list at the end, as always, I include some awesome bonus listings. Some great cards in there. You don't want to miss them, so make sure you stay tuned for those. Let's not waste any more time and get into the good stuff. Our baseball video today is sponsored by Masterworks. More on them a bit later. Let's jump into the list. In the 11th spot from 1992 Bowman, we have the Mariano Rivera Rookie Card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $604. It's came down a fair bit in the last year or so. It's a pop of $1,510 in a gem mint slab. And boxes of 1992 Bowman sell for around $370 to $475. In the number 10 spot from 1990 Opeachy, we have the Frank Thomas Rookie Card graded gem in PSA 10. That was a fixed price sale for $621. Pop of this card in a gem mint slab is only $125, and boxes of 1990 Opeachy sell for around $175 to $350. Also keep an eye out for factory sets. I've seen those sell for around the $150 mark. In the number 9 spot from 1988 Leaf, we have Nolan Ryan graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $877. Wow. That is a gem in slab pop of 19 and boxes of 1988 Leaf sell for around $15 to $35. That is a new one to the top 10, so I've added that to our collection of eBay search results down below. Those are eBay affiliate links. They'll take you directly to those search results for all the boxes in the top 10 plus the ones from our previous videos. So check those out. Moving on, we have a tie for the seventh spot. First up from 1984 tops, we have Don Mattingly's rookie card graded gem in PSA 10. That was a fixed price sale for $900. In a gem mint slab, it's a pop of 885 and boxes of 1984 tops sell for around $250 to $350. Also in that 7th spot from 1992 score, we have the Mickey Mantle, the franchise autograph, numbered to 2000 in raw condition, sold for $900. In series 2 of 1992 score, there was the Mickey Mantle, Stan Musial, and Carl Strimsky, they were all autograph number to 2000. Then there's a triple auto one that's numbered to 500. Boxes of 1992 score series two sell for around 20 to 40 dollars. In the number six spot from 1991 Fleer, we have the Bo Jackson Pro Visions insert graded gem in PSA 10. That was a fixed price sale for 930 dollars. It is a pop of only 10 in a gem mint slab. And the ProVisions inserts were inserted three to four per box. And boxes of 1991 Fleer sell for around eight to fifteen dollars. Tough card to find in gem mint condition though. With those black borders, this is very condition sensitive. In the number five spot from 1985 Fleer, we have a Roger Clemens rookie card graded gem mint PSA 10. That was a fixed price sale for nine hundred and fifty dollars. Pop of this card in a gem and slab is 173 and boxes of 1985 Fleer sell for around $320 to $425. In the number 4 spot from 1986 tops, we have Nolan Ryan graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $985. Two Nolan Ryan base cards from the mid 80s making, well actually mid to late 80s, that 88. Making the top 10, that's awesome. Pop of this one in a gem mint slab is 111, and boxes of 1986 tops sell for around 70 to $90. All right, time to see what we have in the top three, but before we do, I just wanna take a quick second to tell you a little bit about the sponsor of this video. If you're a regular to the channel, I probably don't need to tell you my thoughts on alternative investments such as sports cards and collectibles. We've all seen the number of amazing vintage sports cards set in records this year, but we also need to invest in other assets that can hopefully keep us ahead of this inflation. And it's not just us looking at the collectibles market. They're actually getting so big, even the biggest banks and wealth managers in the world are taking notice. And really, it's no surprise because, I mean, they are stuck. I mean, we got inflation basically stealing 8 to 9% of the money you keep in cash. And keeping your money invested in the market's tough as well because inflation and high interest rates are dragging most traditional investments deep into the red. 
I read over $9 trillion lost for Americans alone. And as we know, certain aspects of the sports card hobby also seeing a rough patch this year. However, those solid investment vintage cards continue to be a pretty good safe haven. And it's not just these iconic sports cards setting records this year. Collectibles in general are having their moment in the sun finally. Just listen to this from Goldman Sachs. Precious metals and even fine art and classic cars can help protect purchasing power when prices are climbing quickly. Uh, precious metals, I knew that. that. I mean, that makes sense, but fine art really got me curious. I had heard that before, but never really looked into it in detail. The last time inflation was this high, fine art appreciated 17.5% per year on average. Only one of three assets to actually gain value. And when inflation isn't rapid, it's still appreciated on average at 13.5% per year for the last 26 years. So how do you invest in this fine art and potentially reclaim some lost returns without spending millions? That's where Masterworks comes into the picture. They've got over 500,000 members who are investing in this very same art, but in fractional shares. This way you can get access to the best artists in the world like Picasso and Banksy. It's pretty genius. As recently as October, Masterworks sold a painting for a 25.1% net return to their investors, which is pretty incredible when the S&P 500 is down about the same amount this year. In fact, six out of seven paintings Masterworks has sold gave investors more than a 20% net return. Masterworks has actually done so well, they actually have a wait list. But by being a loyal Junk Wax Investor community member, you can skip that wait list by clicking on our unique link in the description below. All right, in the third spot from 1993 tops, we have the Derek Jeter Rookie Card Gold Parallel graded gem in PSA 10. This card is sold at auction for $1,430.36. As a pop of 417 in a gem and slab, the Series 1 Gold Parallels were inserted one per pack. And boxes of 1993 tops Series 1 sell for around $120 to $160. In the number two spot from 1989 Upper Deck, we have a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card graded gem in PSA 10. This card sold at auction for $1,925. And a gem in slab, it's a pop of 4049 And boxes of 1989 Upper Deck sell for around $250 to $325. And topping the list this week in the number one spot from 1995 Tops Finest, we have the Ken Griffey Jr. Refractor graded gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $2,300. It's a pop of only 14 and a gem in slab. The refractors in 95 Finest were inserted two per box, so one in 12 packs. Uh, this Griffey can be found in Series 1 boxes, and those have recently sold for around $190 to $250. Bucks. All right, that's it for our top 11 this week. Let me know in the comments below which one of these would you add to your PC. Anybody who knows the channel, it shouldn't be any surprise that for me, it's the 91 Fleer Bo Jackson Provisions. Still need to add one of these to my collection. I'm not in the position to drop a thousand bucks on a 91 Fleer Provisions at this point. So I've been trying to get lucky and pull that gem mint copy. However, no such luck yet, but I will continue to rip 91 Fleer until I get it. Let me know what your choice is in the comments below and take a second to hit that like button as well. All right, let's take a quick look at our Junk Wax Investor Baseball Index. So baseball for the week is up a little bit, 85.2, up from 84.2 last week. S&P 500, NASDAQ all up this week. Bitcoin down a little bit, more or less flat, I guess, for the last couple months it looks like. Baseball Index made up of 63 cards. Here's a list of those cards spanning from 1985 all the way up to 1995. Pretty awesome list there. The summary for the week, we had 27 cards that had an increase in price, 14 with no change, and 22 with a decrease in price. Let's see where baseball stands versus the other three major sports that we track. Baseball has taken back the lead from hockey. 85.2, hockey sitting in second place at 81.9. It was down quite a bit this week. Football down a little bit this week as well, down to 80.2. And basketball is up just a bit to 70.5 this week. I use the collections features of the Market Movers X app to build and maintain my indexes. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. Use the code JWI and get the first month of your subscription for only a buck. All right, time for some bonus cards. Up first, from 1997 Donruss Preferred, we have a two-card law here. This is the Ken Griffey Jr. and Alex Rodriguez 
exponential power die cuts. These are numbered to 3,000. Raw condition sold at auction for $39.99. So this was a 20 card insert set that featured two power hitting teammates from 10 different teams. So each card is printed on thick acetate stock with gold holographic foil and the cards are die cut. And when the two teammates are placed side by side, their cards form the letter X and each is serial number to 3000 as you can see. Pretty low pops for a lot of these. The Griffey, the highest graded is 10 mint nines, no gem mint copies, and the A-Rod as well. Uh, the highest is seven PSA nines, no gem mints of each. From 1994 tops, we have a Nolan Ryan base card graded gem mint PSA 10. We had two Nolan Ryan base cards from the 80s make the top 10. Let's see how his 90s base cards are doing. This one sold at auction for $355. There must be a lot of Nolan Ryan collectors out there. It's a pop of 126 in the Gem Mint Slab, and his cards are continuing to sell really well. From 1994 Upper Deck SP, we have the Ken Griffey Jr. Die Cut Parallel, graded at Gem Mint CSG 10. This card sold at auction for $41. That is a pretty good price, I would say. It's a pop of only six in a CSG 10 slab. There's no higher graded perfect uh, 10s. Over at PSA, it's a Gem Min 10 pop of 52, and but they typically sell for around 190 to 200 bucks or more. So 41 bucks for this Gem Min CSG copy was a great buy. The die cut parallels are inserted one per pack of 94 Upper Deck SP. From 1993 Fleer Ultra, we have the Mark McGuire Home Run Kings insert graded gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $100. It's a pop of only 11 in a gem mint slab, and the Home Run Kings inserts were inserted into Series 1 packs at a rate of 1 in 18 packs. From 1997 Flair Showcase, we have a Pudge Rodriguez Legacy Collection Row 1. Number to 100 in raw condition, sold at auction for $100. There's only been five of these legacy collections graded with PSA. There's one near mint seven, two eights, and two mint nines. That's an awesome premium low serial numbered card of a Hall of Famer for 100 bucks. From 1987 Classic Travel Update, we have the Barry Bonds with the green back, graded gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $1,323. This is definitely one of his lowest pop rookie cards with a pop of only 33. So according to Classic, about a third of the sets were printed with the error, which was the greenbacks, and the regular version is the yellowbacks, which are more common. From 1994 Pinnacle, The Naturals, we have Barry Bonds, graded gem in PSA 10. This car sold at auction for $108.50. In a gem mint slab, it's pop of 36. It's a pretty awesome looking card. Pinnacle with this Dufex process made some pretty neat looking cards in the 90s. So this was a 25 card box set printed with Pinnacle's Dufex process. 100,000 serial numbered sets were produced. So it's not the most rare. However, these are condition sensitive as well. And they are prone to being sticky or bricking depending on how they were stored. So be careful. From 1997 Topps Gallery, we have a Derek Jeter Players Private Issue Parallel. These were limited to only 250 copies. Graded gem in BGS 9.5 and it sold at auction for $116.91. Subgrades were 9.5 for centering corners, edges, and surface, all four subgrades. It's a pop of seven in a gem in BGS slab and there's none graded higher. Over at PSA, it's a gem in 10 pop of only 12. Raw copy sold for $35 earlier this month, so you're not having to pay too much more of a premium to get a gem in BGS copy, 116 bucks. The player's private issue parallels were inserted 1 in 12 packs, and as mentioned before, they're limited but not serial number to only 25 or only 250. From 1996 Ultra, we have a Ken Griffey Jr. Thunderclap insert graded near mint PSA 7. This car sold at auction for $103.50. It's a low pop of only eight, and the Thunderclap inserts were inserted into Series 2 retail packs at a rate of one in 72 packs. There's also a Thunderclap gold medallion version, which was one in 720 packs. Wow. 
And we're going to finish up here with three FLIR glossy factory sealed sets. You got 1987, 88, and 89. And it was a fixed price sale for $450. These are pretty awesome sets to get. The 87, obviously, you got Barry Bonds, Bo Jackson, rookie cards, Will Clark, Barry Larkin as well. 88 gives you the rookie cards of Tom Glavin and Edgar Martinez. And then 89, obviously, you got the Griffey rookie card in there, as well as Craig Biggio, Randy Johnson, Gary Sheffield, uh, John Smoltz. So these are three pretty awesome sets. I've seen the 89 Fleer Glossy set by itself sell for 320 to up to $400 so I think 450 bucks for all three was a pretty good buy all right that's it for the video let me know in the comments below what your favorite cars were also if you have a quick second please hit that like button I truly appreciate the support if you haven't checked out the affiliate links that we have in the description below we have eBay partner network links for various search results specific to the video if you want to do some browsing of some of these cards and sets, check out those links below. It's a pretty helpful reference. Also, we got a link to BCW Supplies, and you guys can save 10% with the code JUNKWAX10. And in addition, we have a link to the Market Movers app, and you can use the code JWI to get your first month subscription for just $1 to give it a try. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, and keep collecting. Thank you.